What is up, everybody? Welcome back to RacingDudes.com, and welcome back to another one of our previews. All right, let's go to Aqueduct Saturday, April 6th. Race 10 on the card. It is the Wood Memorial. Grade 2 race here, going a mile and an eighth for the three-year-olds and obviously the major Kentucky Derby prep in New York. All right, let's go through them. One through 13. Yes, 13 horses here. Uh, and we'll start with the number one, Resilience. And I think he's going to be a long shot that does get a little bit of attention here. Took four races to break the maiden, but when he finally got it done, it was pretty impressive at Gulfstream Park on New Year's Day, actually. He breaks his maiden. Went straight to the Risen Star next on February 17th. And look, Randall K got fourth, beaten three and a quarter. He lost to Sierra Leone, Track Phantom, Catching Freedom. Those three horses will be in the Kentucky Derby. So he's kept good company. Um, you know, I think you're going to get a decent enough price on him here. I think he makes sense as an upsetter. I would not talk you off of him if you want to play him in the spot. He, he certainly is one that, you know, it's like, hey, he's progressing. He's getting better. He's getting John Velasquez for the third straight time. Bill Mott, obviously a good trainer. I get it. You want to take a shot with resilience? Go for it. Number two, El Grande O. I would probably try to talk you off betting this horse to win because he really hasn't had any excuses in any of the three Kentucky Derby prep races at Aqueduct. He's been in all three of them. He's hit the board in all of them, second, second, and third. Like I said, he's been good, but he hasn't had any excuse for losing any of those races. I'm not sure what changes today against a tougher field than one he's been facing, but I do think he'll go to the lead, and I do think he'll turn for home, and if you've bet him to win, you might go, hey, today's the day. I don't think he holds on, though. I really don't. Uh, but if you want to play him underneath, that makes a lot of sense. He will be in the front, no doubt about it, unless he just does not break well at all. The number three is Lonesome Boy. Um, this horse is coming off a stakes win at Parks by six and three quarters. Um, yeah, he's he's pretty much kind of been uh, one of the sources that are running against a little bit lesser company. He's changed hands a few times he, at Aqueduct. Uh, three races back, he came up here and won a seven furlong starter allowance race pretty well. He broke the maiden uh, in a maiden claiming race at Parks by 12 and a quarter. It's just a huge jump up in class, and that's going to be the big question mark there. But let's, the horse likes to win, and the, he's usually competitive other than a couple of his starts here. He has He's had 10 starts, so he's been running a lot. Usually very competitive, so I don't know. I think this is going to be a little too much for him today, but he's not a bad horse. Number four is deterministic. Speaking of horses that aren't bad, I really like this one. He seems like um, an up-and-coming horse. I think it's very tough to come off of a 203-day layoff and win the grade three Gotham in your first start as a three-year-old. I think that's an incredible training job, number one, and just a sign of a really nice horse, number two. He should get better in his second start off the layoff today. I think the bigger question mark for him is how far does he really want to run? And I, I'm not quite sure. A mile and an eighth, will that be uh, up his alley? He's by Liam's map. That's good. He's out of a Spitestown mare. That's iffy, I think. So how far does he ultimately want to run? That'll be the big question. But uh, the number four deterministic certainly has caught my eye. I think he's very impressive. I'd be shocked of all if he gets the job done here. The number five is protective. This horse is still a maiden. But it's a Todd Pletcher maiden, so you never really know. I mean, he's been able to come up here like last year and run well with maidens. So we'll see what happens. He only got beat three quarters of a link by Valentine Candy on debut. That horse has turned out to be okay. He came uh, as a maiden special weight at Tampa last time out on March 10th, and this horse uh, was third, beaten two and a quarter. Really kind of, um, you know, just not, not, not very impressive whatsoever after I think a lot of people thought he would be really good in that spot. Um, so we'll see, but yeah, he's going to come up here and we'll, we'll see what he can do, um, in this race. It, the connections are the big reasons why you go, okay, maybe there's <laughs> some interest in this horse. The number six is evening news. This horse is coming from Turfway park where he started four times over the synthetic. He won two out of these four races, broke the maiden at the 50 K claiming level last time out, a runaway wire to wire, uh, winner in an allowance race going one mile. Um, the one dirt effort was at Ellis Park on debut. Can't hold much of, uh, you know, you know, can't can't hold that against him. I should say there. So uh, everything else been turf synthetic. I think they're just trying to take a shot with this one. But we'll see. Good race last time out. The number seven is Merritt. Yeah, and speaking of taking a shot, uh, this horse was a runaway Gulfstream Park maiden special weight winner on November fourth. Came back, ran third, beaten five and a quarter in an allowance race, and then came back last time out and finished second, beaten five links in another allowance race. So he's been non-competitive in two straight allowances. 
I mean, look, last time out, I think was the time if you wanted to see him improve. I thought that would be the time stretching out second off the layoff. And he was just kind of passed with ease. So I don't know what he's got to him here. I, I don't know if he can turn it around, but Safi Joseph going to just take a shot here with the number seven merit. The number eight Elysian Meadows. This horse was fourth, beaten six and a half in the Sam F. Davis. That race has not come back to look all that good. Um, yeah, another one. I think they're just taking a shot. It's like, hey, it's a last prep. Let's try to let's try to do it. Uh, two straight wins against New York bred company before that open company loss. I, I think this is going to be an okay New York bred. I don't have much interest in the Wood Memorial with this horse. The number nine Tuscan Sky. Sources two for two. He's looked awfully good in two starts so far. Broke the maiden here at Aqueduct going six furlongs. Went back uh, or went back to the track in his next race at Fairgrounds. Ran an allowance over a sloppy track against just two other horses, Nash and Hawks Creek. It was a square off between Tuscan Sky and Nash. Tuscan Sky just put him away, just dominated him down the stretch, basically. Mid stretch, you knew Tuscan Sky was going to win. There's two ways to look at it. You look at it and go, well, Nash, he's not that good and blah, blah, blah. But Nash got loose. Tuscan Sky just tracked him. I thought he did it very professionally. You might want to note Nash did come back to dominate Allowance Company last time out at uh, at Oakland after losing to Tuscan Sky. So I think it's a pretty good sign. So I think Tuscan Sky, the number nine horse, very interesting here for Todd Pletcher. This horse back-to-back -back wins. Maybe catches a fast track for the first time today as well. The number 10 is Gettysburg Address. Um, he's been disappointing. Broke the maiden on debut. They tried him at Oakland in some stakes races and an allowance race. He didn't do much. They they took him up to Turfway to run an allowance race. He didn't do much. He got killed by evening news, eight and a half links. Now he's with Dallas Stewart. I don't know, man. It's, this doesn't look like the greatest sign to me. Number 11, Society Man. Uh, this horse broke the maiden last time out, going one mile at Aqueduct. Did it by three links. Before that, really, you know, no good at all. Two uh, well-beaten allowance, uh, or excuse me, maiden efforts. Tried the Withers, was eighth. Then, like I said, did get the maiden broke. Now here looks like a total long shot to me. The number 12 deposition. Uh, this horse well-beaten in the Gotham and in the Withers as well. Um, you know, broke the maiden, has tried stakes three straight times after that. No luck. Hard to say from this post and with that kind of resume, going to have any luck here. And then the number 13, boy, what a terrible draw for Uncle Heavy. Uncle Heavy won the Withers at Aqueduct uh, last time out and won it by a nose. It was a pretty exciting race. Waited for this one. Going to, you know, wait and wait for this mile and eighth race again and then draws a 13 hole. Not great. Um, look, he does kind of drop back. I think they'll just kind of drop him out, try to make one run. I see a lot of speed in here, so maybe you know, this horse can pick up some pieces, but still, I don't care if you drop all the way back or you go straight to the lead. The 13 hole is not ideal here, um, especially for a horse that's facing a much better field today. So Uncle Heavy, unfortunately, gets that 13 hole. That'll be tough from there. All right, let's go to my top pick here. We've uh, ran through them all. I'm going to go the number nine Tuscan Sky to win this race. I love this horse how and how he looks to be developing. I kind of like how they're going. Six furlongs, mile 16th, mile and an eighth. I think that makes a ton of sense. You look at that allowance race at Fairgrounds, and again, I know it was just three horses, but Nash got loose, and, but Tuscan Sky didn't let him really get loose. You know, he got loose at first, and then they kind of asked Tuscan Sky to get a little bit closer, and he did. He just kind of stalked him and put him away. I thought it was really impressive. I, I really think it's between him and deterministic here. I really like deterministic as well. I think they're both progressing in the right way. I think it's going to be a very fun race, but at the end of the day, I do like the number nine Tuscan Sky just a tad more, so I'm going to put him on top. Number nine, Tuscan Sky. All right, guys, uh, if you want free picks for every uh, every race at Aqueduct, you can find our free win picks for the winner only at Aqueduct every single day, including Saturday. Just go to racingnudes.com slash free picks. If you want exacta trifecta multi-race plays for the full card, including our top four horses in each race, make sure to check out the premium products. We'll have those available for you as well on the handicapping products page. All right, guys. Well, you made it here to the end of the, end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Hit that like button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you really like it. Want to get alerted anytime we do picks and previews like this. And most importantly, good luck if you're playing Aqueduct on Saturday.